Tonight, the ultimate test to see who is the ultimate motorcycle racer. The Super TT is going to test all the skills of the stars of American Flat Track. I'm the best dude here as far as ability-wise. I really just need to go out there and do one thing, and that's the win. We worked so hard this year. The team worked so hard. Let the race begin. Yeah. We're underway. The carrot is there. Can he go after it? It doesn't take much for a guy to go down. Wow, that was close. That was the pressure point. Looking fantastic. Wow, I did not expect this. If he ruffles some feathers along the way, so be it. Can't say these guys aren't tough. They take the win. Unbelievable run. You don't often see domination like this. How impressive is that? What a performance. We haven't been disappointed. It's round three of a progressive American flat track for 2021 inside Atlanta Motor Speedway. It is the Yamaha Super TT and a true test for all the riders at American Flat Track, including Jared Meese, early season points leader through a good run at our first two rounds. Briar Bauman, always strong in the TT tracks, looking to get back on top. He is a defending champ, but all eyes on this man, J.D. Beach, great in the early season run, and his skills might apply themselves best to this very different type of racetrack. Hello, everyone. Jason Wygant today joined by Ralph Shaheen and former champion of the series, Brian Smith, and we're going to take you through an event unlike any other. We'll give you the point standings of the Mission Super Twins class and little news, Ralph. Yeah, you can see Jared Meese after a third place finish in the season opener and a win at the second run there at Volusia has the points lead by three over Brandon Robinson. But coming into today, some controversy, some question. He has an issue with his left knee. He's keeping it very quiet, but it is not 100%. We're going to have to see if Meese can even race here today. So Meese did go out in the first qualifying session earlier today, was not up to race speed. But he admitted with the knee injury that he suffered midweek riding his motocross bike for training that all he can do is try to salvage the night. So he's going to save everything for the main event and hopes to put in all the laps, score as many points as possible. Now, a rider who is clearly 100% here is J.D. Beach, road racing champion, very comfortable on this sort of racetrack, and he's the favorite tonight. For me, life in Kentucky is a great place to be. It's slow. My lifestyle and the way I live, I can control it, which being a racer, I, I think you like to have control. The training, the recovery, the riding and stuff. So I put my life and soul into this career, and I feel like I try and do that throughout my whole day. Yeah, so the dog, depending on what day it is, there, there could be up to six dogs. Believe it or not, we got one dog that's from China that we saved from a meat market. It's a fun time for me and for when I get back from a race weekend and especially when it's not a great one and then everybody leaves for work, the dogs are just pumped and they just want to go for a ride, they want to play ball, they want to go swim. So it makes me kind of put the phone down, get away from life and disconnect and kind of reset myself. For me, I feel like any good racer worries. Because if you didn't care about it, you wouldn't worry. But it's how you control that. If you had a normal job and you showed up, and every time you showed up to work, there was five people you had to go against, and whoever did the best job gets paid that day. That's one of the hardest things for a racer, is your self-worth is how you do that weekend. This year, I'm looking to be towards the front. The step that we took from last year to this year, it's a good step. I want to win races, I mean, and I don't care what track it's at. I, I want to win races. Going into Atlanta, honestly, I'm just ready for it to be done with. It's hard because obviously it's a track that I should do well at. We got right-handers, we got asphalt now, we got jumps. I put a lot of pressure on myself, and so, Going into this one race, everybody's like, oh, oh, oh you can win this. But for me, I, I want that feeling every race weekend. So, I mean, it's been like almost two months since we've raced. When you're not racing, you're not making money, and these dogs are getting hungry. I can let the dogs out, but I can't let the dogs down. <laughs> And the big reason Beach is the big favorite is this, a rare sighting of asphalt with dirt track motorcycles, but he has a asphalt road racing background. Brian Smith, take us for a lap. Man, this is gonna be a fun track. You're gonna have to start on asphalt, which is unique, but the big 
key to this race, I think, is going to be getting down into turn one really hard on the brakes with the flat track bike. It's going to make it tough. Transition into that dirt and through that left right will be a good uh, spot to mess up. Hopefully, um, everybody gets through there clean. Come through that last corner out on that asphalt. You're going to have to get one heck of a run to beat the next guy to the finish line. And that's a lap of the Yamaha Super TT here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Let's introduce Kristen Beat, who will be patrolling from the racetrack all night long. Thanks, guys. In the last three seasons, championships in the premier class have been won and lost by a differential of only 10 points. With the competition being so tight, there is no allowance for a throwaway race. In 2021, riders have to be efficient on all four circuits. Now, if there's a circuit or a track type where riders tend to be inconsistent, it's the TTs. Mistakes can be easily made. Passing can be difficult. And of course, you have your TT specialist skewing the points and creating distance in the standings. Ryan Sipes on the Gas Gas in the singles class, Tyler O'Hara on the Indian in the Super Twins class, two specialists looking to create an upset here in Atlanta. Now, I also checked in with some of our title contenders, guys who are here every weekend, TT specialists in their own right, J.D. Beach, Henry Wiles, and it seems as though there's been an unprecedented emphasis on TT racing over the last seven weeks. These guys have been practicing, using the front brake, flexing their motor skills, turning left and turning right, all because they know the Atlanta Super TT has championship implications, guys. Well, thanks, Kristen. And here are four riders going to show those skills. Briar Bauman, J.D. Beach, Sammy Halbert, Davis Fisher were our fastest in qualifying. $5,000 on the line in our Mission Super Twins Challenge. These were your four fastest riders, first and second place finishers in our semifinal qualifying. And how about that? J.D. Beach immediately back up front, but the attack from Sammy Halbert in second. Well, the start by J.D. Beach was so strong, Brian, he's already got two bike links or more on Halbert. That's going to be hard to make up. Yeah, the hardest thing that uh, they're going to have now is just catching him, let alone passing him. They needed to really beat him off the line, and unfortunately, none of them did that. Okay, so the Mission Super Twins Challenge. We're going to go four laps here on this Yamaha Super TT track. We were watching a semi earlier, and Beach was able to get away from Halbert big time. Halbert a little bit closer now, so he's definitely learned something each time he's out there with Beach, trying to keep the Yamaha man honest. Halbert's going to school, get into one on that pavement. The, the thing he can do right now is just study JD and hope he can learn something that he can apply in that main event. Well, Beach with the road racing background, multiple championships in Moto America as a factory Yamaha rider. That is the American Road Racing Superbike Series. And he is also one heck of an ace on oval flat track. If you combine those skills together on a course like this, he's going to be hard to beat. But Halbert, a lot closer now than he was earlier. And here comes Briar Bauman to third. Yeah, that's what Halbert's really got to worry about is Bauman behind him. Bauman's closing. Look how deep he gets into one there. Brian, you've said it. Even before riders are on track, there's so much to be gained and lost in that first turn. Yeah, you can really set somebody up not only just getting in there deep on the brakes, but setting up getting out on that asphalt and getting a good run before you transition onto that dirt. And a lot of the riders say there's actually some paint there because that is pit lane for the NASCAR track here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. So getting back on the power after the first turn, hard to figure out where the traction is. Beach has done it the best, but if they can keep a little pressure on, maybe they bait him into a mistake. Final lap, and you can see just how smooth he is through that corner there. A lot of guys are running it in really deep, squaring it off and driving out. He's really, as tight as it is, finding a way to arc through there and keep some momentum going. Well, they call him Jiggy Dog, J.D. Beach. Fast at yesterday's test day, fast in qualifying this afternoon. He wins his semi, and now he's going to take $5,000 as a bonus for winning the Mission Challenge. And one thing left on his list, and that is the main event in Mission Super Twins a little bit later tonight. Can he make it a perfect night for the Estenson Yamaha team? Halbert, improving every time he's on track, says he really just has a lot of fun with this layout, regardless of the result. He has enjoyed it. And we're going to show you the results here from your Mission Challenge. $5,000 going to go to Beach taking the win. Halbert. Bauman in third, Davis Fisher fourth, but that's a pretty much a winner take all sprint race. Let's go down to your winner, JD Beach. We're, we're working as hard as I can all day long, but uh, I mean, we're going to have the race this track, and uh, we got some fast guys out there. It's not going to be an easy main event. I just hope I can get a good start in the main and uh, just go lap by lap, but uh, an extra five grand from Mission is pretty awesome. 
The racing world mourns the loss of Dick Bugsy Mann, who passed this week. Mann scored two AMA Grand National Championships, wins in every discipline of flat track, the prestigious Daytona 200 road race, and even motocross. And further, his starring role in the seminal film On Any Sunday helped launch this sport in America. Dick Mann was 86. Progressive American Flat Track is brought to you by Mission Foods. Mission Foods has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast, too tasty. And by Progressive, Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs. So get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash Progressive. Law Tigers, you never have to ride alone. AFT Production Twins presented by Vance and Heinz. These three, they faced off in the last race. Corey Texter, Chad Coast, Dan Bromley. We expect them to be battling for this championship all year long. Let's give you the highlights of their main event from the Yamaha Super TT. A little bit of a wheelie from the 10 of Lewis. That's going to slow him. Daniels down on the inside in the 32, trying to control the lead, and he does. Lewis got that bike too much up in the oh, air, and over he Lewis. goes. Johnny Lewis up and in the back. Let's see if the 32 of Daniels can control it from the front row. Dalton Gauthier there in second. Hopefully he can latch on to Dallas and maybe uh, put a wheel on him. Dallas Daniels. Brand new onto a Twins motorcycle. First time he's ever raced it. Bromley was a rider we thought that could win tonight, and Lewis has come from the last row to catch him. Whoa! Oh, man! Ben Lau. Low gets loose on that pavement. Man. But he's back up. He's going to keep her going. Maybe no red flag. There's Dalton Gautier. No slouch in the talent department either. And he's trying to make up ground from second. As we check back in with Johnny Lewis, he's now into the top five after starting last. For this being his first race on a twin, I'm impressed. I'm sure everybody that uh, has seen him grow up is really impressed. But uh, it's just amazing to ride one of these twin motorcycles on any track, let alone a rough TT track like this. It's really impressive. The point of the night for yeah. him is right here dealing with this traffic because he's riding smooth, but you don't know what the other guys are going to do. And this is where he could get caught into a problem. Dallas just has to be clean here for the final half of a lap to bring this home. Unbelievable. His first race on a twin in this production twins class. And Dallas Daniels delivers again, this time in production twins. Well, and you know, congratulations to Johnny Lewis, too. It was a not what he was hoping for, but to ride all the way from the back to fifth, very impressive on that Royal Enfield. Unbelievable. Bromley holds off Colquitt to see third, fourth. Gautier was second. Daniels with the win. And uh, Corey Texter, who is very strong in contention for this title, but admits he is not a TT specialist. He salvages some points with sixth. Let's go to our winner. Tonight, wanted to get the win on the production twin. Uh, the track's amazing. American Flat Track did an awesome job. It's so much fun. My road racing supermoto experience really plays well into this, and it's just, it's been a blast riding this thing. I thought maybe it'd take a little longer to get used to it, but it was, uh, it was great right from the beginning. It handled awesome. Yamaha Monster Energy. These guys give me the opportunity to ride this thing. Uh, this is just the beginning, and I uh, can't wait for the next main event. Let's get to Dunlop Tire Talk. Tire is always an important aspect of racing, but especially when you have a track that is asphalt and dirt. So, Brian, what's the play tonight? Well, with the Dunlop tires, there's two compounds, a three and a five. The three is softer, the five's a little harder. The three is going to offer more grip in the infield on the dirt, but it's going to wear out a little quicker. The five is going to be a little bit harder, but go the distance. I'd go with the five for that main event race to go to the front. So Dallas Daniels already making some history here, winning on a twin the very first time he has raced it. And he's headed right back to the line to try to win two mains in one night. Our singles feature coming up after this. Progressive American Flat Track is presented by Cat Rental Store, the official heavy equipment supplier of American Flat Track. And by Progressive, Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash Progressive. Mission Foods, Mission Foods has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast, too tasty. Let's check out the singles class point standings here, Ralph. Well, Jason, Shayna Texter Bauman came firing out of the gate of Volusia, winning both nights down there. She's got a nice double-digit points lead over Mikey Rush. But of all the different track designs that AFT runs over the course of the season, the TT is her weakest link. Of course, she'd like to win tonight, but I think if she can hang on to the points lead, that's as good as a win. And that's going to be tough because a wild racetrack like this bringing out wild card entries. Look at the Red Bull on board. That is the X Games legend, Travis Pastrana. He's here in a battle with his buddy, Ryan Sipes. Here's Kristen. The 11 time X Games gold medalist, Travis Pastrana, making his singles debut in the American Flat Track Series. Travis, how have you been preparing and what are your expectations for this race? 
Yeah. Um, well, I called up Chris, and uh, he said he'd give me a bike, so I called up Roger and Ian, um, who were my team managers uh, back a long time ago in a race Supercross, and they said they'd get a motor. Um, called up Red Bull, and we got, a, we got Super Mario out here with the rig, and Ryan bet me a dollar that, uh, that I would lose. I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose that dollar, but, uh, you know, confidence is key, so, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick butt. It's going to be awesome. I love it, Travis. Thanks so much for being out here. And as Travis said, two sides to every story, a dollar bet. Ryan, I mean, obviously, he's your competition, but what kind of advice have you been giving Travis on his debut? Yeah, I'm not a real flat tracker either, so the <laughs> advice, I hope he didn't listen. But, uh, no, just the things that, you know, the guys that taught me how to do this, uh, J.D. Beach and Johnny Lewis are the main ones, and just trying to pass along the advice. Not that I can do it that well, but I try to give him the same advice they give me. AFT singles class and it's hard to pick a winner here because some of the favorites normally in the singles class struggling in the TT and some other riders like the 377 Ferran Carduce very fast and a lot of wild card entries as well so Brian Smith how do you pick this tonight man it's really a roll of the dice at this point but um, by what we've seen earlier I would have a hard time betting against Mike Rush or Dallas Daniels well, this should be a good one. A stacked field. Pastrana, Sipes, Carduce, Rush, Whale, and Dallas Daniels looking for the double. Good jump from Rush down to the inside, but this time Dallas Daniels going to edge him out from the outside. What an outstanding start, Brian. He had from that far outside area to cake the lead like that in turn one. That's tough to get the whole shot from the outside of the front row, but if you can do it, you got a one heck of an entry into that first corner. He sent it and it worked, but he has company. Ferran Carduce, who has been on fire every single time he's been out on track. The Spaniard is up to second. Well, the one thing we saw out of him, Jason, as we go a little bit deeper into the field here and watch some of these other guys fighting for turf, is that Carduce is not afraid to do anything to make a pass, but Daniel stayed nice and calm. Yeah, it was fire and ice between the two of them. Look at the road racing style, almost a knee drag from Carduce in second. Brian, he has been wide open every time we've seen him. Carduce is, does not lack any bravery uh, with the way he rides that thing into turn one. Uh, it's amazing to watch him. Is he on the edge? Yeah, but does he want to win? 100%. Well, I think the other thing, too, is Rush back there in third, right there on the 15. He's awful quick, and he might be a thorn in the side for Carduce that might keep him from applying that pressure to Daniels, which would allow Daniels to pull away. Oh yeah, Rush has had the speed to match anyone today. Then you got young Cody Kopp, another teenager, up in fourth. You're looking at Ryan Sipes here, the general. He does a little bit of everything, and he has won in American Flat Track TT races before. He's in a battle right now. The veteran Henry Wiles is able to shut the door on Sipes. Well, don't forget with Sipes, the big thing with him, he's racing for a dollar bill here tonight. He's <laughs> got a bet with Travis Pastrana as to who's going to finish higher. Pastrana's done this a lot. He did it recently with Brian Deegan at the Cranon Off-Road World Championships. Won a dollar there. Could lose a buck here tonight. Pastrana's 10th. Sipes is in 7th. The race within a race. Carduce continuing to apply pressure to Dallas Daniels. This is good stuff, Brian. Carduce is going to keep these guys honest. I'd really like to see a three-rider battle here. The Essence and Yamahas have been fast all night, and uh, Carduce is trying to upset the uh, sweep here for Essence. And then you got Mikey Rush up in third. As you theorize, Ralph, he could be the spoiler. If either of these riders make a mistake, he's going to put his number 15 right in there. What a showdown. These two riders battle for the lead in their semi the entire way. They pass each other back and forth, and we got it again in the main. And look at Carduce way up on top of those parts, putting all that pressure as he works that front brake. It's amazing watching him get in there once again on the front brake so hard. and. Uh... That's going to be, I think, where he goes for the lead if he if he gets up there and gives uh, Dallas Daniels any any pressure. But boy, Brian, you can see just how different the riding style is. Both ends of the bike for Carduce are loose. The front and the rear dancing all over the place. Daniels' bike way more stable. Yeah, a lot of that comes from the riding styles. Um, Carduce really aggressive. Dallas not so much. You might see Travis right here. His bike dance around a little bit because he's an aggressive <laughs> rider too. Uh, yeah. That's Pastrana on the 199. You're not a Jester set. He's a flat track racer for one evening. He's already checked one box. He's made the main and uh, battling to get around Luca for 10th. Did you see Pastrana's helmet? All the different excuses that he could use for not winning. My favorite was one minute you're young and fun, and the next you're turning down the stereo <laughs> to see better. <laughs> Hilarious. All right, we're closing in on the finish. We'll be right back after this. 
Welcome back, Atlanta Motor Speedway. Singles class, Dallas Daniels leads the way. Arduce feet off the pegs, different feet in different corners, just doing whatever it takes. That was a rare mistake from Daniels on the landing of that jump. This would be pretty impressive if he can sweep two main events in one night. Well, we were talking about it earlier, Jason, that I think Dallas Daniels is the brightest young talent in American motorcycle racing of any kind on the dirt, on the pavement. This young man has a lot going for him. And obviously, Brian, when you start saying that, everybody goes, could he be the next one to go to MotoGP? So many great American champions in MotoGP started in flat track racing, dirt tracking their way to their career. And Daniels has a great mentor and family looking after him with the Haydens helping him. 100, you're 100% right, Ralph. Um, Dallas rides every bike he gets on like he's a seasoned veteran. You don't usually see a 17-year-old kid with this much composure on a track this gnarly. And he has done it. He was smooth on the twin earlier today. He won that one. And he is starting to distance himself from Carduce. Oh, oh. and Carduce makes a mistake. Well, he's been pushing so hard. I don't know, Brian, you think he maybe overcooked the tires a little bit? Now he's falling back into the clutches of Rush? You know, these are flat track tires not really designed for asphalt, and he's pushing it really, really hard on that asphalt corner, so I wouldn't be surprised if those tires are getting really greasy at this point. And Carduce works with the Brad Baker, who helps us in the announcing booth from time to time on our shows here. So he has a great mentor as well, and he's going to need all the experience because make a mistake like this, hard to gather it back up. Wow, you can see right there the front front brake just locked up the front wheel for a split second. He was a millisecond from going down. And right back to sending it as he tries to avoid Rush, who would love to make it an Estenson Yamaha 1-2. There was some talk coming into this race. Could the Estenson Yamaha team sweep all three classes? They already got production twins with Daniels. Daniels leading this one. Later on, we'll have Mission Super Twins where their man J.D. Beaches look fast. Maybe even a 1-2 here, Ralph. Well, J.D. Beach is certainly going to be the guy to beat going into that one. So uh, it could be a great night for Estenson. And there's a lot of Yamaha brass here because their headquarters in the U.S. is now split between California and right here in the state of Georgia. And Rush wants in on the party. He's looking for second place. Carduce is definitely being a little more reserved going into turn one now after that little scare last lap. Uh, yeah, that would probably change your approach. And Rush looking to take advantage. Rush squares him up. Cardiz able to get to the left side in the exit. Oh, and Rush almost pitched it on the transition from dirt to asphalt. Here comes Mikey. Look at that. Down to the inside. Wow. And a little bit more conservative approach now from Carduce. And that's exactly what Rush needed. And it's a now a Yamaha 1-2. He has to have used up those tires, Brian, because it forced him to back off and Rush capitalized. Yeah, I didn't think Rush coming up the inside like that. He was going to be able to outbreak Carduce, but uh, as you said, I think his tires are going away. You can see he's even getting even more loose in the dirt section, which just isn't good for Carduce. He better hold on to her. And time running out of this one. By the way, Sipes has drifted back. Ryan Sipes is eighth, Travis Pastrana ninth, so their friendly bet could come down to one position, potentially in the last lap as we watch Dallas Daniels. Hey, wait a minute. Mikey Rush is in striking distance if Dallas makes a mistake. Time is ticking away quickly here, but Rush is closing, and Dallas can't lift too much here. And the 17-year-old got some of that kid energy, but he's got to be a little tired. He just raced a main event in production twins. About 10 minutes later, he's back out here in singles. Well, and that gap is only about a second and a half right now, and I'm guessing the adrenaline is flowing from Mikey Rush. Oh, you can see it, Ralph. It is down to two to go, and he can see the leader. Mikey Rush is reeling him in. He's no stranger. He's won Grand National races at the top level on a 450, and uh, one hiccup from Dallas Daniels, and Rush, look at him right there in the back of your screen. He's going to be on him. Got Max Whale in fourth, Cody Cop fifth, and it's Wiles, Bruner, Sipes, Pastrana, Andrew Luker, the top ten. But now, Dallas Daniels is going to have to deal with some more pressure. He got away from Carduce, but he's going to have to deal with his teammate as the white flag is out. Got to get turn one right one more time. Can't make a mistake here. Rush ran it in there deep. He reeled him back in a little bit. I'd say he's cut the gap in half of what it was two laps ago, but now he's running out of time. Daniels just needs to be perfect on the transition back to the asphalt. Here it comes. 
What an historic night. Dallas Daniels wins in his first ever race on a twin cylinder motorcycle. Jumps right back on his familiar single and is going to win two main events in one night. You what? said it, Ralph. Maybe the hottest young prospect in all of motorcycle racing in America, and that is why. Yeah, and they should be excited about it. They know the future is bright for this young man. It's just keep checking these boxes, Brian. Keep working with Tommy Hayden and the rest. This kid's got a bright future. Oh, bright, bright future. So there it is. Daniels on top of the results two times in one night. Rush, he did rush through the final laps and a great performance by him. Carduce Whale, Wiles in the top five. And there's the $1 bet. Ryan Sipes edges Pastrana by a single spot. Let's send it down to Kristen. The first rider to win in two classes in the same night since Ricky Graham. Dallas Daniels getting it done. He actually just told me, he said, I am done. He's tired and deservedly so. Dallas, keeping your emotions in check, not making any mistakes, hitting every mark on track. How did you manage that race with such efficiency? Uh, well, you know, after the production race, just tried to relax a little bit. But right when I was doing my interview, they were firing bikes up. I'm like, oh, geez. I get my stuff back on. I'm like, I just got to get a good start. I just need to stay with the guys and do something with them at the end. I just wanted to be in the hunt. And I got a whole shot, and I was like, okay, I'm, a, I'm the guy. I just got to maintain. And I was, I was kind of nervous, and I was just like, put in laps, put in laps, hit your marks. I knew my breaking markers. And um, as going into the last corner, I could, they were, the sound was kind of going away. And I'm like, okay, I kind of got a gap. And I looked over at the Jumbotron. I'm like, okay. Now, I can come back a little bit, but I need to keep going pretty fast. And I ended up going into the right-hander and went off the track, and I had to go through the mud. So then my heart rate's back up, and I'm like, oh, geez. And so then I almost went off the track to two laps to go, and I was like, all right, I need to calm down. This is it right here. And, yeah, it was just an awesome night. Big thanks to the whole Essence and Monster Energy Yamaha team, Arai, Dionysi, Motion Pro, Vortex, WPS, Fly, just everybody that helps us out. It was an amazing night and just a... Uh, I'm, I'm ready for bed now, but this was awesome. I can't believe it. All right, more wins for Dallas Daniels. Check out the points, Ralph. Well, Dallas will now take over the points lead. Shayna Texture Bauman having a, a rough night. TT just not her thing. And Mikey Rush now, second in the championship, just three behind Daniels. Let's go hear from him. Chipping away at Ferran Cardus. You put it on the inside and made the pass. What was the mentality in that moment? Just plain right, go for it. I mean, I seen him make a mistake, uh, I think a lap or two before. He drove real wide. So I was hoping I can get right on his rear wheel and pressure him into another mistake. But Veron's a hell of a rider, so it was hard to get by. But he kind of drove it in a little wide, and I got an awesome run. My Yamaha was running killer tonight. My whole SSN team just did a phenomenal job. Mike Stauffer did build us a hell of a motor. Um, um, just got a killer run out of uh, the last corner onto the, onto the stretch. and. Like I said, that Yamaha power went right by that Honda, so it was awesome. But uh, big thanks to the whole team. I couldn't do it with all the whole Essesane Racing crew, Monster Energy, Yamaha Racing. Uh, my buddy Jimmy Wood for working his tail off this week and helping me out phenomenally. My suspension was on point. Um, just to everyone on the team, I can't, be, I can't ask for a better team. I'm so blessed to have this deal, and I, I just love everyone, like family on that team, and I'm just having a good time. <laughs> Hi to my wife and kids at home, too. What a run, third place tonight for Ferran Cardus. The same line of, of Dallas and uh, Mikey, and it's impossible. He's too fast on, on the last corner, an amazing traction, and it's, it's difficult for me, but I'm very happy to stay here on the podium. Uh, thank you very much, all the sponsors. Uh, for me, stay here, it's, uh, it's a dream. We will see what strategy each rider goes with. It's been working great for JD Beach so far. The likes of Sammy Halbert, your defending champion Briar Bauman, and of course Jared Meese trying to get a hook in the Yamaha Man as our Mission Twins main is up next. Welcome back to the Yamaha Super TT from Atlanta. Time for our Mission Super Twins main event. Well, here's your starting lineup. Let's bookend the field. JD Beach has the prime grid spot because he has been unreal on this track. But a big story is in the back, Ralph. Yeah, that is, of course, the multi-time champion in Jared Mees. He came into the day with an issue with his knee. Uh, we were not really being told exactly what was wrong, but it has been giving him problems all night. He has not been 100%. He's going to start at the back of the field. 
Jason, just by starting, he's guaranteed at least scoring four points. I think he's hoping just to minimize the damage, hope that maybe somebody in front of him goes out, he gets another point or two, and he can then build on that as the season progresses. Let's go racing our main event, the first ever Yamaha Super TT from Atlanta. Well, they've all got to try to beat Jiggy Dog J.D. Beach off the line, and they failed to do it. J.D. Beach has been perfect all day and night, and he leads them into the first turn. Oh, boy, everybody fighting to keep it straight. You saw Bauman almost get high-sided there. Able to survive is Sammy Halbert, who's in second, and Bauman somehow in third. With Davis Fisher right behind him, and then number 20, Jared Vanderkoy. But it's almost like two packs, everyone battling, and J.D. Beach getting away from them. But Brian, they really needed to box him out in that first corner, and they just couldn't get off the line to stay with him. Yeah, this is bad news for the competition to see J.D. Beach get that good of a start. What well, you're not used to seeing is Jared Mees in the back like that. All right, he's got the knee injury. Just by racing this main, he's already going to score a handful of points. But Brian, off camera, we were talking about the strategy. Somebody else has a mechanical problem, goes down. Jared might actually make some more points. Yeah, he's got to circulate out there at the best pace he can. Obviously, he's injured, but... Uh, with the, this type of track, there's bound to be a, a crash or a mechanical, so he's hoping to pick up whatever points are left. Same thing for Briar Bauman. He wants points. He is third, your two-time and defending champ, trying to get around Sammy Halbert in that 69 for second, and here comes the run. Sammy's been pretty good here tonight. He's been pretty strong in his semi and throughout the day, so he is not going to be easy for Bauman to get around. That's some good tutelage, of course, from the Coolbeth Nyla racing team. Kenny Coolbeth, former champion of the series, hung out with those guys last night. They really enjoy the layout. He said, regardless of the results, oh, no, Mies is calling it a night. So it looks like he's going to take just the four points and for 15th and call it a day. Got a couple of weeks off before we race again in Texas. What do you think, Brian? Is this going to be something you can get healed up quickly? We don't really know the extent, but... Yeah, two I mean, weeks, not a lot of time. With only two weeks, it don't leave you much time to heal up at all. But uh, there's one guy that can do it, as Jared Means. He'll come back swinging at Texas. So taking advantage is Briar Bauman and Sammy Halbert as far as the championship is concerned. But this year, J.D. Beach is not just fast on the TTs. Beach was right there, almost won our season opener on an oval. So he could be a title contender as well. So they're all taking advantage of Mees' trouble. Bauman trying to take second away from Halbert again. Bauman starting on the outside, trying to switch to the inside, and Halbert couldn't get the drive off. I was talking with Sammy earlier today, and he told me he's super confident on this racetrack, really enjoying it, having a lot of fun. Of course, he works with a former champion and Kenny Coolbeth and putting this team together and running this operation. So a lot of knowledge between these two when it comes to veteran skills, but it cost him there with that bobble. He hit those bumps, but he comes right back. And look at this, Jared Vanderkoy up the inside. He's going to push Bauman back to fourth. Wow, this is a scrap for second place here. These guys are going to be going at it all race long. Well, how about Vanderkoy striking? I'm not even sure how that happened. It looked like Bauman had clear racetrack, and then Brian, next thing you know, he's all the way up against the outside of the berm. Yeah, it looks like Halbert here's uh, missing his marks and kind of making a few mistakes, holding up Briar a little bit, and that's let uh, now Davis Fisher and Vanderkoy get in the mix. Sir Vanderkoy on the Mission and Roo Systems back machine on the 20. Look at this, squares up, gets to the inside of Halbert and takes second. Boy, Vanderkoy is riding inspired, isn't he? Jared having a great run here in the main event, finding himself in second now. He's on the Indian motorcycle this year and clearly comfortable on it on the TTs, but then he makes a mistake and Halbert tries to come back on the 20. We're halfway through the main event and J.D. Beach leads. Welcome back, Atlanta Motor Speedway. It's the Yamaha Super TT. J.D. Beach continues to lead. Beach almost won the opener on the oval, finished second, and they believe they can run with anyone on any track, but you put Beach with his road racing background on this track, and he is untouchable. So we'll keep following the battle for second here. The big bobble for Beach was that ninth place finish on the second night at Volusia. Had he been in the top three, maybe even top five, wins here tonight like he might do, he could be the points leader leaving Atlanta. Absolutely, and they did go with a little a change of the firing order for the engine for this track, but they don't know if they're going to be able to use that at the oval. It could still be, be better to go back to the old engine setup. For tonight, though, there are no questions, only answers 
for Estens and Yamaha. They are looking to sweep all three classes. And Brian, he, he heard Jason watching this here, that transition. Oh, that's the mistake by Halbert. Wow, that's one heck of a save by Halbert. It looked like he was going to do a 360, but somehow, like Sammy does a lot of times, he holds onto it and rides it out. So we're talking about the Yamaha and some of the changes they're able to make, Brian, and uh, pretty drastic, but it's paying off right now. Yeah, no doubt. Volusia, the first two races, JD had one great night and what, one mediocre night. Obviously, tonight he's having a great night. So hopefully this was a sign of things to come for the Yamaha, giving an Indian a run for its money all year. When you start putting confidence into the rider and success with good finishes, boy, this team is really primed in a position to be a strong contender. You've got Vanderkoy, who has shed the pressure from Bauman. He is now all alone in second, the rider from Ohio. And I don't think he's going to be able to give Beach a run unless Beach has a problem. But this is quite a statement from Vanderkoy, now on the Indian, making it look good. Vanderkoy's only been on the podium once before at last year's season finale, I believe, in uh, Daytona. So if he can hold on to this for his second ever podium finish, he'll be more than stoked, guaranteed. Oh, and yeah. he might even feel even better about this one because I think coming into the night, he was not one of the riders that people thought could be a podium guy, and he's proven everybody wrong. It's a good battle right here. Tyler O'Hara, not a full-time runner in this series. He's pulling double duty of his own right this weekend, and he's running near the top five. Yeah, he's on that 129 right there, Jason. And earlier today, he was up the road at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta right, racing a bagger around that undulating road course, and here he is. TT. Yep, just got passed by Bronson Bauman, but still he is now in seventh place on that 129. So O'Hara showing the versatility and comes right back on Bauman, then runs it wide. Bauman tries to get him back. And the Yamaha Super TT track showing its fangs here. So good back and forth between these two riders, both on Indian motorcycles. And Bauman able to control that for the moment. He is sixth. Colby Carlisle is fifth. Davis Fisher fourth, third, Briar Bauman, Vanderkoy second. We check back with your leader, J.D. Beach, six second gap. And Brian, Bauman. we see a lot of the same line through turn one between J.D. Beach as well we saw with Dallas Daniels earlier. They're able to round that first corner off a little bit more than everybody else, carry just a little bit more momentum through that corner, buys you a tenth, maybe two or three, but over the course of the race, that's a big difference. Yeah, you can see it right here. It translates into a whole straightaway. It's uh, really amazing watching JD just make it look easy, really, in that turn one and two pavement area. It's something that nobody else has done tonight. And when you talk to JD, you can tell this is a guy that just loves to ride motorcycles any kind, be it a road race, be it flat track, be it a motocross bike which he uses in training. Just an enjoyable guy. Even when the results were bad last year, still a fun guy to talk to, but Man, at the end of the night, the smile is going to be ear to ear for this guy if he keeps it up like this. This track's starting to break apart and get rough. If you watch JD the next time through that right hander after the jump, he's actually standing up on the pegs to let the bike move up and down, just like he does on that motocross bike when he's training. And some trouble there. Uh, as you theorize, Brian Smith, this track can definitely do a number on the motorcycles. Here's Briar Bauman in third. Podium points, is he going to be happy with that, or is he not going to be happy about the fact that the lead two are pretty far out in front of him? No, this is a good night for Breyer okay. in the championship hunt, so to speak, uh, with Jared having such a bad night. I think he's uh, Breyer's main competition for the year in the championship, so he's going to maximize, dang near maximize the points on Jared. Yeah, and also the 44 of Brandon Robinson who won our season opener. By his own admission, struggling on the TT track, he is toward the back as well, so for Breyer, it's only a third. See, Robinson is in 12th, and Mies is not even circulating any longer. So it's all coming together for Breyer, even with just the third place finish. Back to the beach. Estenson Yamaha looking to sweep it in the new home state as Yamaha's Motorsports headquarters is now in Georgia. So a lot of the brass here, and they've got to be happy with what they've seen. Dallas Daniels winning production twins and singles, and J.D. Beach absolutely dominant here in Mission Super Twins. You know, back in the day, these manufacturers would take out win ads, wouldn't they, after yeah. a big day like this? And you can only imagine how many Yamaha would have had billboards all over the place 
with an ad saying they swept their own event here with the Yamaha Atlanta Super TT. What a spectacular night for the Yamaha organization. Oh yeah, put it up I-75, so when all the brass head back to the office on <laughs> Monday morning, see that their homework has paid off. And also a shout out to Tim Estenson, who has put in a lot of effort, and let's be honest, dollars into this race team, and what a squad he has this year. And a great job by Tommy Hayden, who's leading it as a team manager. Yeah, it has all come together for them. So this was the man with the target on his back. Everyone knew J.D. Beach, a little bit of style. Threw a no-footer over that. That's about as much <laughs> as you can do on a flat track, but that was pretty cool. Wow. So the pressure was on. Everyone knew J.D. Beach would be strong. Could he deliver on that height? Could he deliver with that pressure on the target on his back? He has done it. J.D. Beach doesn't just win. He dominates the Yamaha Super TT. And everybody's happy over there with the Estenson Yamaha crew. He gets it done. And by the way, this win isn't just a one-off. He has shown that he can get it done on Ovos as well. He could be in it for a championship this year. Briar Bauman going to cruise across in third. I believe that's going to put him into the points lead. And a great job, Jared Vanderkoy in second. Beach takes the win. Final margin, 4.8 seconds over Vanderkoy. Has a second career podium. Davis Fisher, a good run, fourth over Carlisle in fifth. I believe that might be a career best for Carlisle in this class. And it's Halbert, Bauman, O'Hara, buddy Larry Pegram in the top 10, and Robert Pearson rounding out the top 10 and 10. In the offseason, you and your team had to have some really tough conversations about your performance and your confidence and getting to where you needed to be. How good does it feel to now take this win at the Atlanta Super TT? This, I mean, this feels amazing. I mean, I, 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 I can't thank my, te my team enough. Through the tough times, I mean, they're always working. Uh, coming into this race, uh, I, I got to th thank my trainer, too, Ty, uh, Ty Katie. Uh, I, I was kind of in a dark spot just because I, I felt like I had so much pressure on me to do good here. And uh, we were able to pull, to, pull, to pull it through, though. And, I mean, yeah, I got to th thank my whole Edison right, 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 right racing team. I mean, this race went smooth for me. It was uh, my best race ever. And, uh, I mean, I just got to thank my family, my fa my fa my fa my fa my fa my, fa my family and, and everybody and all my sponsors and uh, just like uh, Jet, 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 Jet Lawrence said after his win a few weeks ago you gotta let the big dogs eat Ooh. well JD Beach once made a living in road racing he has now switched full time to flat track but some of those old road racing skills came in handy tonight a dominant run the likable young man who rides in Kentucky we'll be right back Progressive American Flat Track is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle, official partner of Progressive American Flat Track, and by American Flat Tracker, the official apparel of AFT, and by Mission Foods. Mission Foods has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast, too tasty. Well, let's check out the point standing. Some big changes here, Ralph. Well, Jason, I mentioned it during the race that had he been better at Volusia, he might have taken over the points lead. Well, guess what? He did. He's three up on Briar Bauman. Let's send it to second place. Your second career Super Twins podium, Jared, huge gains between uh, the day and qualifying and practice to here in the main event. What did you find out there? Uh, just a good start, really. You know, uh, my Barnett clutch got me off the line really good. And, uh, man, I just uh, kind of, like, pickled, like, when Sammy and uh, Briar got together there and snuck under both of them. And I'm like, all right, consistent laps. I know these guys are going to be hard charging at the end. And uh, it worked. I mean, man, Ben Evans, uh, Jay Maloney, Shane Narbonne, everyone got this uh, thing running really good. Uh, thank, huge thanks to the Roof Systems, HCRR, everyone involved. I can't, can't thank you guys enough. <laughs> Uh, I saw your girlfriend, Jen, at the side of the track. She was cheering, crying. Who was more excited, you or Jen? Uh, I was more nervous. I, I guarantee that. I mean, she uh, she lets her emotions get to her for sure. But once I, I didn't think I breathed the last three laps. So uh, once I went across the line, it was a sigh of relief. And, uh, no, we can do this. So hopefully we can do this again more this often. And consistency could be the order of the day for your defending champ. Let's send it to third place, Briar Bauman. I'm friends with everyone in here, so I want to be so mad at them because they just smoked me, but at the same time, I'm proud. So back and forth on emotion, I, I'm very, very disappointed in myself and how things went in that main event, but at the same time, another podium, we're here racing. Fans are here, we're here in Atlanta, and uh, two of my good buddies are on the podium with me, so can't complain. All right, our next race at AFT will be going to Texas. 
This is pretty exciting here at the TT track, Ralph. It is, and Eddie Gonsage will be looking forward to welcoming everybody to Texas Motor Speedway. And as great as J.D. Beach was tonight, I can't get over Dallas Daniels, Brian. It's impressive with how much like a veteran he rode, but he's probably one of the youngest guys out there. Very impressed with him, and congrats to the whole Essence and crew for clean sweep tonight in Atlanta. A lot of great stories to watch as AFT rolls on for Ralph Shaheen. Brian Smith and Kristen Beat. I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching. Congrats to the Yamaha boys sweeping it tonight.